We're just about to do our last presentation of full length. So, everyone can have a seat or take to the hallway. Engineer at Red Hat, and uh, today uh, this is about uh, the application of uh, an open source tool for accessibility applied to help to test the uh, And now we can map the test a sample for functional testing. We will see how the community can be notified to change to any accessibility matrix. And now, this can provide some other additional benefits that we can only leverage during our uh, So, before starting to around this tool, it is an open source tool for management. That, um, the development is mainly driven by the project, an acronym of uh, Enabling Linux in Production, is a project of uh, Linux Foundation. This is a web application um, that can be applied to both of the containers. It supports uh, user management and um, its main purpose is to establish possibility between work items such as requirements, test specification, test test results, bugs, and uh, so forth. So comes up with a test application framework that is a uh, available section that allows users to run any kind of testing against um, different types of target testing. So, let's have a look to the Linux by Linux test project. Uh, the first approach to uh, any project like this is going into implementation right now. So, the next project is uh, uh, suggesting in the implementation to try to find an untested tool. And uh, as we uh, try to find some untested parameters or errors, so the my around that uh, explained on the image on the left is that people not uh, the one person to do the analysis, and anyone is doing the uh, analysis all the times, and the findings are. Uh, Immediately lost because we are not really with any findings. No? So, if someone can spot a gap and um, probably can contribute to the test, but that's the end. The new one, the new contributor, will be after having some analysis. So, the goal is to reduce the test of the side on both of any project. And that can be, can be done clarifying the gap. No? The gap when you are in a project. You can start contributing at the same time. So, we can try to look at this goal using a disability tool in the middle of the user and uh, the subscription. The subscription. So, the idea that is that the subscription uh, can, uh, can be part of the user, can be in the middle of the user. So, the user can, instead of 
the man page and re-optimize it, but we'll actually have a man page. And then we will provide to the user a simplified view that I like the most. So you, on top of using the man page, you access this tool and have a quick problem. What is the current guy? The party findings can be the new tool. You can add a new test for the database for the specification and then you want to understand those findings, you know, and we are going to try to test the use of the guy and try to the test coverage. Or uh, anyway, the requirements for the requirements. So this tool is for working the requirements, so you can create the requirements again, it's specification, and so on. Here is the so simplify the onboarding, and that, that approach can uh, uh, drive the community to increment the contribution. So um, this is how the tool looks like. So, uh, the, 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 in the main section, we have, uh, I don't know if you can read it, but I, uh, the, the, the web section is divided in two sections. On the left side, you have the reference document, so it can be uh, the software specification, can be the picture, can be any manual or whatever, specific manual or whatever. And uh, on the right side, for each section, you can specify work items. So in this video, you can see some uh, section that has been mapped against the text. And for example, the, the gray section doesn't have any any work item related to it. So it's interesting this way to know it's still the section for this particular functionality. We don't have any test, so anyone can join this section and uh, start building a test for that functionality. There is another uh, uh, way to uh, start to get and bring up percentage of coverage. So the name is not the first one because we are talking a lot about post coverage, but it's not intended to be post coverage. We can also have on the right side uh, what, um, software requirements, for example, test specification or whatever. to our community. But the work item is enough in fact to cover the work item. You cannot need to uh, create other work items for the animation that we have come with. So we can um, um, use our investigation just to have uh, everything to uh, a small section of the document. So uh, before we get into the analysis of what I did for the this tool, uh, let me add a little bit around the tool. This is, this is meant to be a collaborative tool. So uh, this tool provides a different view. You can focus on uh, the work item that you want. So the, the idea is to try to work in parallel with the software engineer and the software engineer. So a software engineer can write the test specification for a functionality. So you can to test this functionality, you need to perform it manually. And then you can perform the other. So, and in parallel, a test engineer can start implementing the test provided by uh, the software engineer, that is not the, the best version, but um, other collaborative uh, uh, features are common, you can start the discussion around uh, what items, uh, and you can also support uh, what item life cycle, so you can have uh, uh, our item now in progress, you can ask for me, uh, someone can approve your work item, can reject it, you can reject it, and something like that. Another thing is that you can enable notification at some component level. So you can enable notification anything that happen around our software component will be notified if someone add a new test, if someone run a test, uh, test uh, you will be notified about the test result and uh, stuff like that. So you can you join your instance online. So uh, what is the analysis uh, the idea? So, starting from the Mumpet project, I installed the tool under the Mount 2 uh, folder. And from that, uh, at this moment, I have the software component, the disk, and the Mumpet software specification. So, I will be able to put the uh, software component into this uh, tool. After that, I uh, added the tool the Mumpet with an automation. So, at the one page, we are basically in a way that we can um, extract some sections, and inside section, we can uh, find a way to 
arguments, uh, options, and uh, different type of errors. So I collected the, the information, and uh, for, for this one, I verified if we already have an LTP uh, particular option for that system. And yes, I put the, the attempted work item in the room that has been mapped against the relevant function of the um, I also add a, a screen of the code so, uh, to identify the implementation file uh, and the technical way to collect and implement. So, this way, uh, as an exercise, I put the document work item that has been mapped against the synopsis section of the homepage. So, you can even check the synopsis and match. Of the point of uh, the same arguments, the same aspects of the term value, etc. So, um, this analysis is publicly available under the Analyza web server, available in Gisrel, the uh, navigation tablet. Um, so, for this project, this is publicly available. You can join the tool. Your accounts, you can contribute on the uh, to define the automated trust ability. Anyone can benefit from that. But you can also start uh, another uh, library, I don't know, create for a, a kernel subsystem, create, you know, software components so of your system can be uh, analyzed uh, and it will be applicable for more than any other library. So, Try to navigate this one. Okay. The, um, the public responsibility we are in the system library where we have around 100 uh, systems. And so, what we are looking for uh, an API that has been analyzed by the uh, So you can uh, select different view tool. Uh, now we are probably on test pages, but you can probably on different websites and for example, you can just uh, evaluate to the mapping because uh, the mapping with the mapping uh, you can easily uh, in a compact view. So let's go to the test view. Okay. So uh, you can see that the first element that has, that has been mapped is a justification. It is our time element to provide the completeness of analysis. So we want that all the application have a related work element, a work item for a three, a ten steps, one stress for all. So, um, anyone that analyzes the system and uh, this is just an example so let's go to uh, the synopsis so this is uh, the uh, document work item so where you can see uh, this is the file of the implementation and this is the section of the file that implements the, the system and uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is automatically validated things. So at the moment, this link is broken because this file changes by the time that I have it mapping. But the tool can help you to automatically do uh, some, some kind of changes. Um, and um, let's scroll up this down to a section that has been mapped automatically. So, for example, you know, for some errors, I was able to identify the that cover this section. And so we can see that we have some untested uh, error type. Let's uh, try to evaluate now to an API that I analyze a little bit more detail after uh, the uh, initial automated effort. So, uh, as the synopsis has been mapped against the Cisco, I added another view, and the Cisco just 
another function. So I uh, add the other function. Anyone can have a clear idea, more or less, of how to visualize the uh, Then, in the case of the Pinocchio, uh, we, we already talked about a different API. So uh, I added a different API, so not part of our uh, analysis. It's a different system. And then, um, I uh, analyzed the special detection of the, uh, the detection of the, um, of the application. So you can see I added some more details, you know, um, collecting the data that we have available uh, in a useful project in the moment. Um, another uh, thing that I want to show to you is uh, just all the, the documents so you can see the other section with, with that. So uh, another thing I want to show to you is that uh, uh, this provides a comprehensive framework that uh, gives uh, um, an abstraction for you to be able to run any kind of testing in any language. So the solution was to use this abstraction layer a Python model provided by um, Red Hat, so a Red Hat project named the same thing, the acronym of Test Management Tool. And this tool provides um, a provisioning system, so you can, uh, uh, there are uh, several provisioning systems that you can write. This one is uh, based uh, at the moment to supporting a Fedora container and uh, connect via Fedora with uh, your own device uh, or uh, you can connect to the other So let's click on next one. From, from the three dots in a menu, you can install the uh, option. So, for example, I already have the request, so you can see uh, I have the test result, and uh, I can navigate information about this test. Uh, for example, the log, the log test, uh, where you can see this, uh, this test has some, uh, uh, some requirements in terms of uh, uh, dependency. So it's installing additional packages, and uh, at the end of the log, so you can see uh, the results. So, uh, for example, uh, it performs uh, several uh, verification, and we have uh, uh, all the test system. So you can also use artifacts because uh, uh, this provides uh, uh, some environment variables that you can leverage. Uh, and if you move your, uh, your artifacts in a particular folder, you can access it from the different folders. You can also uh, link bugs to the tool because this tool is aimed at the bottom matrix, so we want to, to know if uh, for a failure we already have a bugs or, uh, or not. And you can rerun it and run the runners of the so let's back to uh, the slides. Yeah, just, just a reminder to me to talk about the test execution framework. Yeah, it was around the uh, software that can be you know, now that uh, software is something that we uh, change uh, quickly and that most project like you know, the Linux kernel. So um, we can provide a few ways to follow the stuff forward with you. So for example, uh, reference document uh, change, you will see that the mapping never exists and uh, that will be used at the end of the project to refine the mapping, you know, manually. Or we can leverage some automation by the tool mapping uh, uh, still in the document, but it's just tested because it will um, handling uh, uh, the mapping of offset and the content. So uh, it can help it automatically some kind of, uh, of uh, broken link. The other way is the one that I showed before, our document, the uh, context document, you 
can uh, uh, delete it by the any time that you want to do the mapping for so, uh, will be notified. It's a uh, document change. So, for example, for example, for example that can be delivered for you to have a second investigation. There are, from my point of view, possible approaches to the cost of evolution. You can uh, uh, fix the version of the cost of evolution. Uh, but most of the for projects like uh, in automotive or other tools uh, like this, because now we know that we want to uh, have on the particular version of the software and changes are no, not so frequent. And uh, in this case, the mapping will be more stable. So the mapping will be affected from the right side of the tool, only from the right side. So in this case, we don't have to implement any slide in the, uh, in the specification repository. Uh, the problem is that the uh, analysis doesn't reflect the state of the art of the, of the software. The other solution is that we can follow the of the repository. And in that case, the mapping is going to change uh, quite soon. And in that case, probably the best solution is to have a slide in this case. This can help you to automatically fix stuff and to at least change it. So, uh, depending on the project, but probably you can also, no, uh, not alternative, you can apply both, uh, both approaches. You can have in the same library a reference to a particular version of the software component and another uh, instance of that software component that Let's talk a bit about uh, the possibility to display this like this. This idea comes with an HTTP API. So essentially, this is the structure of the tool. It's a set of front end that interacts with the HTTP API. It's the only part of the tool that interacts with the front end. So the user can interact with the front end, but can also interact directly with the and any action that you can perform on the internet can be done on the HTTP API. So you can run your test, for example, check the result, and then uh, I don't integrate with the test application in the world, for example. So these are a few examples of automation. So uh, all of the num page, for example, has specific uh, the changes in the page. We need to have this project in a repository that allows CSD, or at least we need to have a CSD repository that at least night we run to the site to this, uh, to this project. And then from that we can uh, notify people about the uh, changes and we can automatically fix them. And there is another uh, idea to notify you know, the, um, the mapping, so to keep the mapping up there. Starting from the test, the Linux test project, so we spent it on adding some uh, metadata into each test, with mapping information, and we can reduce this network information inside and keep the metadata data in our test list. Uh, from my side, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to stop now. Thank you. Thank you.